Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome back to another session about Al-Nahdatul Husseiniyatul Mubarakah or the renaissance of Sayyidina Al-Husseyn radiyallahu ta'ala anhu alayhi salam. The initial plan was to finish on the 29th of uh, August, which was yesterday. But due to the intensity of the topic and subject, uh, Sayyidi is willing to continue the sessions, inshallah, until we finish uh, the, the chapter of Karbala from Al-Bidayah and Nihaya. Inshallah, we'll be continuing today. Before we start the program, just a couple of reminders. Again, if you want to, if you uh, would like to enroll uh, in our one-year one intensive Vasuluddin program, the registrations are open now online, and this year the whole program will be online. So please uh, to register on uh, MadinaInstitute.life/signup for uh, for more information. Inshallah. Bismillah. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد الصادق الوعد الأمين وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين ورضي الله عن أزواجه وأصحابه وأحبابه والتابعين وعنا معهم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا اقسمنا علما وعملا وفهما في الدين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وآله في الأولين وصل على سيدنا محمد وآله في الآخرين وصل على سيدنا محمد وآله في الملأ الأعلى إلى يوم الدين واغفر لنا وارحمنا وتوافقنا ولنا يا رب العالمين اللهم اغفر وارحم وتعطف وتكرم إنك أنت الأعز الأجل الأكرم ربي اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي We are continuing إن شاء الله تعالى with the uh, accounts of the renaissance of Sayyidina Imam Hussain from uh, Al-Bidaya wa Nihaya by Ibn Kathir rahimahullah and we're going literally word for word with little if any commentary and if there is a commentary I will try to say this is my comment I'm going to try to as I've tried tried not succeeded all the time to continue so. One question has been repeatedly, and I know I'm not gonna, I don't wanna answer questions to be honest with you here because this is history reading. It's a book reading rather than a uh, discussion thing because otherwise we, it's not possible to finish. And due to the fact that there's really no final word in history, simply due to the nature of the narratives that contradict and uh, are not on solid basis anyway. Uh, but a repeated thing, I think that there's a benefit in elaborating on just a little bit before we start, is who betrayed Al Hussein? Al Hussein went there and all this. Who betrayed him? Well, who betrayed him are two kinds of people. Those who claim they love him and support him and they gave bayah to him. And also those who did not stand with him and left him alone. Uh, those who uh, 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 have gone to the extent of uh, hating anyone who did not support him, yet they themselves failed to support him. After they pledged to him, they betrayed him. And those also, the others, the other side, who also was so hateful of anyone who was with al Hussein and was sensitive from the presence of Al-Hussein, from the mention of Al-Hussein, 
or the brother of Al Hussein, or the father of Al Hussein, or the mother of Al Hussein, they become irritated, sensitive, and they'd rather turn the other way. Those two people or two uh, groups are those who have betrayed Al Hussein, in my view, uh, in the past and in the present. And therefore, uh, there is a reason we're saying a Nahba or the renaissance of Al Hussein, because Al Hussein uh, engineered his movement to be a renaissance for the Ummah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, following the steps of his grandfather and of his father, Sallallahu Alaihi Sayyidina Muhammad and uh, that will become, uh, you don't need to ask me for my view. That's the beauty of reading a book together. And uh, like I said, uh, the truth is known to Allah Azza wa Jalla time. We now go back to Ibn Kathir, page 5513. We're still in year 60, in Al Bidaya wa Nihaya, the events of year 60. And uh, if you remember when we, we left off, where uh, Al Imam Al Hussein is already on his way to Iraq, and he has already been also while he's there, he's go, he's traveling, he's sending letters to the people there in Iraq, so that uh, they can uh, he solidify. He's solidifying the stance, asking, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right, and. Uh, 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 Ibn Kathir says, وَأَقْبَلَ قَيْسُ قَيْسُ نُمُسْهِرْ الصَّيْدَاوِ إِلَى الْكُوفَ بِكِتَابِ الْحُسَيْنِ Remember that al Hussein uh, uh, sent Qais bin Mus'hir al-Saydawi to Al-Kufa. That's the last thing we mentioned last time. And he sent a message, a written message with them from al Hussein bin Ali إِلَى إِخْوَانِهِمْ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُسْلِمِينَ to his brothers. From the Muslims and the Mu'mins, Assalamu Alaikum, praising Allah, the one that no one uh, uh, is Lord but Him, telling them uh, that the message from Muslim bin Aqil uh, was received by me, telling me about your good views and that your uni unity on um, uh, uh, supporting us and uh, asking for that which is right. Um, we ask Allah to reward you and to keep you steadfast and i have left mecca uh, to you on tuesday the 8th of the hijjah the day of tarwiya if my once my messenger yani Qais bin Mushir al-Saydawi, the messenger i'm sending this message with once he arrives then tighten your matter and uh, become more serious for i should be there within days inshallah ta'ala Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Remember that message? Now, the messenger, Qais bin Mushir, is leaving. Obviously, he arrived to Kufa. So he does. He was by himself on the horse. He does not have the women and the children and the, uh, you know, the, the, the convoy or the caravan. He is just on his own, so faster. So he got there on the horse with the message of Al-Hussein, heading to Al-Kufa, and he got to Al-Kufa until he went there, uh, al Hussein bin Numair took him, one of the people uh, that are close to Ubaidullah bin Ziyad, the governor of Kufa, if you remember, right? And uh, Ibn Ziyad obviously now uh, took a hold, the governor of Kufa took a hold of the messenger of al Hussein with his message, Qais bin Mushir al-Saydawi, right? And he, uh, Ibn Ziyad brought him to the palace of the governor uh, and told him, go to the highest floor, yani on the ceiling of the palace and slander the liar, son of the liar. Yani he means, he means you are the messenger of Al Hussein. There is a way for you. top of the of the uh, of the palace. You scream so that all the people in Kufa can hear you, Yani. And that I'm, I'm saying that I'm translating the meaning, uh, not the wording. And but the wording fasubba slander, Yani, 
curse the kadab, the liar, the son of the liar. He means curse Al Hussein, who he calls him kadab, liar, the son of the uh, of son of Ali, and he calls also Ali the, the liar. Right? This is the governor of uh, Kufa, Ubaidullah bin Ziyad. So obviously, with the soldiers and all that, and he was caught, the messenger of Al Hussein was caught, Qais uh, bin Mushab. So he went up and he praised Allah and he said, Ayyuhan Nas, and obviously the people were gathered because uh, everybody wants to uh, hear who, uh, what is the message. And uh, Abdul Baidullah bin Ziyad has told them what to say. So Qais bin Musar, when he went up there with the soldiers and obviously he's now forced to speak, he said, Inna al Hussein ibn Ali khayru khalqillah. O oh, people, Al Hussein ibn Ali is the best of the creation of Allah. Ibn Fatima, or among the best of the creation of Allah. He is the son of Fatima, the daughter of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa ana rasuluhu ilaykum, and I am his messenger to you. Wa qad faraqtuhu bil hajiz min batni rummati fa'ajibu. And I left him at so and so place, coming close to you, very close. So answer his call. Basically, the messenger of Al Hussein did not, may, he may have uh, implied when he was caught by Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad that he will gather the people in Kufa and he will say whatever Ubaidullah the, ibn Ziyad, the governor, would want, to, would want him to say. But the messenger of Al Hussein was much more honorable than that. He went and spoke the truth. Then, ثُمَّ لَعَنَ عُبَيْدَ اللَّهِ بْنَ زِيَادٍ وَأَبَى And then, uh, the messenger of Al-Husayn, he cursed Ubaid Allah bin Ziyad and his father. وَاسْتَغْفَرَ لِعَلِيٍ وَالْحُسَيْنِ And he asked Allah to forgive Ali and Al-Husayn. Obviously, that means, Ya Allah, يعني, you know, grant them forgiveness and elevate their status, etc. That, in that sense. فَأَمَرَ بِهِ ابْنُ زِيَادِ When upon hearing this, Ibn Ziyad obviously was waiting for his message to go through, but obviously it did not. Conscious is there, not all people you can buy. Not all people you can buy. Not all people are for sale. Not all conscious uh, of people, conscience of people are for sale. Uh, not all deen of people are for sale. Some people will sell their deen. For either their dunya, worse off somebody else's dunya, but not everybody. Some people have principles. Some people have values. Some people have deen. Anyway, going back to the text. Well, upon hearing this, Ibn Ziyad ordered, the governor of Kufa, ordered, فَأُلْقِيَ مِنْ رَأْسِ الْقَصْرِ فَتَقَطَّعْ They took him and they threw him alive from the top of the palace where he spoke, down all the way, and shattering him into pieces, right? Wayuqal ibn Kathir says, it is said all his bones were broken and he was still, he, he was still alive. He did not immediately die. فَقَامَ إِلَيْهِ عَبْدُ الْمَلِكِ بِنْ عُمَيْرِ الْلَخْمِي فَذَبَحَهِ One of the people of, uh, in Kufa who was close to the governor of Ziyad, he went to him and he slaughtered him. The man is going to die already. He was thrown from the highest level in the palace all the way to the ground. He's going to die. And he figured, you know, he says, let, let me just go. So he went and beheaded him. And he said, I just wanted to uh, give him comfort from the pain. And uh, Ibn Kathir says, it is, uh, maybe it's a man that looks like Abdul Malik bin Umayyad, and it's not him. It makes no difference anyway. One of the people of, uh, yani who, are, who want to buy some, uh, uh, some uh, street credit, credit with the governor, with Abayyadullah bin Ziyad. Uh, Ibn Kathir says, Wafi riwaya, and there's another na narration that the one who, uh, the messenger of Al Hussein was not Qais bin Muskar al Saydawi. That's not him. Uh, someone else 
whose name is Abdullah bin Bukhtar. And Abdullah bin Bukhtar is the brother of Al Hussein in milk kinship. Right? Remember in Islam, we have uh, people become brothers either through blood or through being breastfed by the same mother. Even if they're not blood brothers, she just volunteers or wishes to breastfeed another baby, exactly both babies, more or less same age, breastfeeding age. And if the same woman, regardless of who she is, whether she's the mother, the biological mother of the children or not, if she breastfeeds someone uh, during breastfeeding age, uh, right, uh, few, uh, few sessions, uh, then, and we don't want to go on the numbers because people disagree and scholars disagree about that, then they become also her children exactly with all rights except inheritance. All other rights, children uh, of hers, and they're called brothers in milk kinship, min rada'a, right? For example, yeah, just I'm just explaining that. Example that you should be familiar with is Sayyiduna Hamza bin Abdul Muttalib, Hamun Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the uncle of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was his uncle and he was his brother sallallahu Hamza was uh, the brother of Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi from milk kinship. They were both breastfed by the same woman for some time. So while he's his uncle, yet he's his brother at the same time. And that's one of the beautiful dynamics we have in Islam. In the old days, this was common up until recently, uh, you know. Nowadays, there people are not even breastfeeding their own children for two years so but in the older days they used to right uh, and uh, they used to also breastfeed the yani a nursing woman would also nurse other babies either of the same family or the neighbors you know they used to help each other so uh, div di divert, uh, divide the tasks and that's how it used to be anyway so uh, Ibn Kathir going back to Ibn Kathir he says Ibn Kathir says and in a narration, other narration, that the one, the messenger of Al-Hussein was not Qais bin Mushir, Saidawi, but was no other than Abdullah bin Bukhtar, the brother of Al-Hussein from milk kinship. And he is the one who was thrown off of the uh, top of the palace. Wallahu a'lam, I mean, Kathir says. So there you go. I mean, even with these things, we know, or at least historians, they say it happened. Who? There is disagreement. Khair, both of them are, insha'Allah ta'ala, shuhada, they're martyrs, may Allah accept them, uh, may Allah ta'ala bless them for their faithfulness, for their principle, uh, for the principles, for their bravery, for their chivalry, for their uh, generosity, for their honesty, for their transparency, for their sacrifices. Uh, and that's the, this is what we can learn from the whole history irrespective of the authenticity of the narrations in history, but we can learn the morals of the stories and the morals of the stories are, are right and they're good. And we need people like that who are principled, who are not willing to sell their deen uh, for uh, whatever it is, who are not willing to sell their, sell, sell their soul to the devil. It is, it's very important uh, to have people like that and to raise people like that for their parents and all and others and the teachers. Anyway, back to uh, the, uh, uh, what Ibn Kathir says, Ibn Kathir says, ثُمَّ أَقْبَلَ الْحُسَيْنُ يَسِيرُ نَحْوَ الْكُوفَةَ al Hussein is continuing to uh, move towards Kufa and he does not know of anything that has been happening there, Ibn Kathir says, right? Then, uh, he, uh, Ibn Kathir brings another narration saying, al la min al illa al Hussein, every time he passes by some people, uh, yani some people obviously, you know, on the way to the, in the desert, to try to go where there is uh, a water, where there is some people at least, 
And so every time he passes by one oasis or another, people follow him as well from that. Another narration also uh, from the two people from uh, Banu Asad. Uh, remember those uh, that we've talked about, the two people from Bani Asad who came from Iraq and uh, to Mecca uh, to do Hajj. And they were listening to the conversations that were happening between Al Hussein and Abdullah bin Zubair next to the Kaaba. Remember that kind that narration? Anyway, those two actually continue, the narration continues from them if it's authentic. Uh, and they say, uh, they both said, Lamma we finished our Hajj quickly. We did not have anything, but we wanted to follow Al Hussein. And they said that they actually caught up with him. And obviously you can catch up with him, technically speaking, simply because Hajj is Arafah and a couple of days after that. And Al Hussein was going slowly because he has children and family and, and a caravan. These guys, if they're going on horses, they can catch up with him easily. He says, they both says, فَأَدْرَكْنَاهُ وَقَدْ مَرَّ بِرَجُلًا مِنْ بَنِي أَسَدْ uh, we caught him, we caught up with him, meaning they said we caught up with Al Hussein, and he had passed uh, a man from Bani Asad that he almost asked, but he left and continued going. Uh, they said, uh, we came and asked that man, what happened? Uh, do you know anything about what happened in Kufa? So basically, Al Hussein saw this man, but did not ask him. Uh, when these two people came from, finished their Hajj and came back, to go back to their uh, home in Iraq, they wanted to catch up with Al Hussein. They passed by this man, whom Al Hussein passed by him earlier, and they asked him about, "Have you been? Yani, what what ha, what are the news in Kufa?" He said, "I left Kufa when Muslim bin Aqil and Hanif bin Urwa were killed, and I saw them with my own eyes being dragged from their feet through the markets." Right, so uh, yeah, he, that. So they said these two men. They said then we caught up with Al Hussein. Fa We told him this. We asked a man who was in Kufa, and he told us that he himself saw Muslim bin Aqil and Hane bin Ura, Muslim bin Aqil, his cousin. Right, that's the first messenger of Imam Al Hussein, Muslim bin Aqil bin Abi Talib, that hero. Right and the husband of Ruqayya. Uh, and uh, uh, Han ibn Urwa, remember the chieftain uh, of uh, one of the tribes there in Kufa who has housed Muslim bin Aqil in his home. Ubaidullah bin Ziyad, the governor, had killed them both. Uh, so they went Al -Hussein, to Al Hussein, they caught up with Al Hussein, and they told him, uh, this is what we heard from this man, Al Hussein kept saying repeatedly, Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. Faqulna lahu, so then these two men told him, Allah, Allah, fi nafsik. Then we ask you by Allah to protect yourself. Faqal Al Hussein replied, there is no good in living after people like this in the heart. And this is, again, people who have spent time together through good, through difficult times, and people who have, who, what brought them together is Allah. Uh, that's my comment here, I'm putting here. Remember that the authentic hadith that seven people will be shaded in the day of judgment where no one is shaded but those whom Allah grants a shade for. One of the seven kinds is, and two people, they loved each other for the sake of Allah. They gathered on Allah and they separated on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yani Allah was the one that is, that that day that made them together. 
uh, and brought them together and they gathered on him and for him subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's where al Hussein shows you his uh, also the loyalty and the appreciation for those people who are good who have served selflessly for Allah and died for the mission gave their life happily for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for the mission of uh, Sayyidina Imam Hussein, the Renaissance of Al Hussein. And you know what? Then you understand when he says, there is no good in living after them. So, yani if that is what is uh, what Al Hussein says about Muslim bin Aqil, what do we say about after our loss of Al Hussein? Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. Anyway, going back to the book, he says, may Allah choose for you. And uh, some of the companions, Ibn Kathir says, some of the companions of Imam Hussein, upon hearing this, that what happened to Muslim bin Aqil and Hanna bin Urwa, well, they're already in Iraq now, they haven't arrived to uh, Kufa, but they're already there, uh, ca catching up closely now. Uh, so some of the companions of Hussein, they said, Wallahi ma anta mithla Muslim bin Aqil. You are not like Muslim bin Aqil. Yani you are Al-Hussein. And if you come to Kufa, once you arrive in Kufa, people will be even faster to you, coming to you, than they had come to Muslim. Uh, and I mean, Kathir says, others said, yani other narrators say, when the uh, companions who are in Al Hussein with Al Hussein heard that Muslim bin Aqil radiallahu anhu had was being was murdered was murdered maqtal murdered here and he was murdered wathaba inda dhalika banu aqil bin abi talib the children of aqil yani the brothers of muslim they were with the caravan of al Hussein and they told him wallahi la narja by allah we will not return back until we catch with our revenge or we taste that which our brother Muslim tasted, meaning what? We die. Either we seek our revenge from them or we will actually taste death just like equally with our brother. Our brother dies, we die. Those are the children of Sayyidina Aqil bin Abi Talib, the brothers of Muslim when they heard the, what happened to their brother, Sayyidina Muslim bin Aqil. Fasar al Hussein, uh, al Hussein kept uh, going, obviously moving, he is, the caravan is moving of al Hussein uh, until he reached a place called uh, uh, Bazar, uh, Bazar Wad. Um, and uh, when he arrived at that place, Bazarwad, or Bizrawad, that one, uh, we have, he arrived at Bizrawad, uh, he had, he re received a message that the messenger he sent with his message to the people of Kufa after he uh, had left Mecca was also killed. Yani either his brother in milk kinship or uh, Qais bin Mushaf. They now, some message, some people came and told him, the messenger you sent has been killed in Kufa. He says, Al Hussein allegedly said, our supporters have let us down. Our, those who pledged to support and those who have taken bayan, those who have all this, they have let us down. And he told the people, whoever amongst you want to leave, you can leave without any harm. Yani, even if you had pledged to Al Hussein, uh, you can leave. He relinquishes his any rights he had over you, he told the people in his camp, and Hussein is telling them, 
وليس عليه عليه منا دماء and we hold him without any harmlessly without anything he can go right our people have let us down now you don't have to go anyone who wants to leave leave فتفرق الناس عنه اياديا سبا يمينا وشمالا he says uh, people left him right and left remember what the Ibn Kathir was just saying every time Al Hussein would pass by a well of water, and so where there are people, people would join him. People would join him. People would join him. So now the caravan is massive, big. But upon hearing this, and then Al Hussein telling them, giving them the way out without any, without feeling bad in a sense, you know, you know, you, our people, our loyal supporters, our Shia and Kufa. In Iraq, have let us down. So, um, any of you who wants to leave, leave without any problems, without any feeling anything bad, and I relinquish all my rights, basically, and my the pledge that you gave me, I will uh, uh, annul it and uh, uh, relinquish my rights in it. Right. Uh, Ibn Kathir says, all oh, basically all the people uh, that had joined him on the way had left. And the only people that stayed, that remained with him are those who left with him from Mecca. Right? So look how it starts, right? With these 72 people. And then, you know, maybe hundreds of people joined. And then it goes back to the same people. Same people. Ibn Kathir says, um, He did, Al Hussein did this because he thought that those people who have followed him from, as, uh, from the uh, different oases and villages on the way, they followed him because they thought that he's going to a place, to a land in Kufa where people obey him. Right? And, uh, you know, he's the leader there. He did not want them to go with him knowing or not knowing what they are facing, Ibn Kathir, Ibn Kathir is saying. Meaning, this is not a trip coming with a chief and you're just going to come and sit. This is not that kind of trip. He did not want to mislead them so they can go and obviously eventually realize that, you know, things are not really uh, settled in Kufa and people are not with Al Hussein in Kufa, etc., etc. And Ibn Kathir says, and he knew, وَقَدْ عَلِمَ أَنَّهُ إِذَا بَيَّنَ لَهُمُ الْأَمْرِ Ibn Kathir says, Al Hussein knew, if he explains to them the situation exactly as is, أَمْ يَصْحَبُوا إِلَّا مَنْ يُرِيدُ مُوَاسَاتِهِ مُوَاسَاتَهُ فِي الْمَوْتِ مَعَا the only people that would remain with him are those who want to die with him because it's inevitable death then. And therefore, those who went with him, you see how even in the movement of Al Hussein, there will be people who will latch on. Hey, you know, what's in it for me? What's, you know, so long there's no sacrifice. Why not? It looks like it's a good movement to join. But Al Hussein realizes that his movement requires sacrifice. It's not just talking the walk, it's walking the walk. It's not just talking the talk, it's walking the walk. And few people want to walk the walk. Few. They want to talk about the walk, but not walk. Wallahu a'lam. Going back to Ibn Kathir, he says, فَلَمَّا كَانَ مِنَ السَّحَرِ so he says when it became, you know, uh, uh, night, night, when it's night time, he ordered all his people to drink water as much as they can. So they took a lot of water, they drank and took a lot of water. And then he went until he went to Bibatni al Aqaba, Fanazala Biha. He went. Uh, until he went to a place called uh, Al Aqaba and he uh, uh, camped there. Ibn Kathir brings 
another narration. Uh, and this narrator says, I was told by someone who spoke to Al-Hussein, someone the unknown. But again, I'm not talking about the Asani here. It's just for reading history. This man said, I saw camp uh, being raised, uh, raised and put in an open desert. I asked to whom belongs this camp? This is for Al Hussein. This man says, I came close to the camp. So I saw a man is reading the Quran. This man says, I came to the camp, I saw a man reading the Quran. And tears are falling on his cheeks and his beard. May my father and mother be sacrificed for you, O son of the daughter of Rasulullah. What brought you to these lands and this desert where no one is? Hussein told this man that here are the messages from the people of Kufa that they've sent to me and their pledges to me and their bayah to me and their promises to me and i think i see them but killing me those very people who have pledged to me pledged to support me and pledged to be with me are going to kill me then hussein continues allegedly to say if they do that they will not do, they will not leave anything sacred, but they will violate it. Meaning, well, once you do something like this, you won't stop. I mean, what is lying again and cheating again and, and uh, deceiving and uh, forging and uh, slandering and cursing? What is that? That's nothing. I mean, they've done already that. That becomes, they'll violate everything. Right? Nothing becomes sacred. No limits. Al-Husayn said to them, said to this man, he says, Allah Azza wa Jal then will uh, 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 will allow things uh, to happen to them that will humiliate them. They will be, as a result, they will be humiliated in this life. And another narration Ibn Kathir brings, al Hussein says, Wallahi, la yu'tadanna alay, by Allah, they will transgress against me just like Banu Israel transgressed on the Sabbath, meaning it's definite. And another narration that Kathir brings, Wallahi la yada'uni. By Allah, they will never leave me alone until they take my in, inside out. Right? If they do this, Allah Azza wa Jal will subject them to humiliation until they became become the most humiliated. This narration here says, and he was killed, yani Imam al Hussein was killed or was martyred in Ninawa, Ashura, the 10th of Muharram, year 61. Another narration that Ibn Kathir brings. He says from a man, and Rajulim al Qami also unnamed. So you see I mean, you know, the narrations. Uh, this man said, I was in the army that Abdul Ubaidullah bin Ziyad, the governor of Kufa, sent to Al Hussein. And they were 4,000 people. They were sent 
a little bit further east first initially to fight there. But Fasarafahum Ubaidullah, but Ubaidullah bin Ziyad turned them from going and fighting for justice and right or whatever it is for expansion. I don't know what uh, what uh, Daylam was fighting for rights and all that. Yani the Muslim cause at that time, uh, he turned them to fight Al Hussein. 4,000 warriors and soldiers. He says, I was in that army. Falaqitu Hussein. And I met Al Hussein. Obviously, we came close to him. Faraaituhu. I found him, his hair is black on his head and his beard is black. I told him, As-salamu alayka, Aba Abdullah. Salam alayk, Aba Abdullah, his nickname, Imam Hussein. His nickname is Abu Abdullah. He said, As-salamu alayka. I could see from his voice he has this uh, right uh, tone. Taqala, he told him, Lakat batat minkum fina sellatum min layla. Yeah, he says uh, there was uh, some uh, theft that was happening. That was happening. This, this man is just describing. Another man called Abu Khair al he says also, I mean, Kathir brings, he says, Lama sabbahati al khayl al Hussein ibn Aliyan rafa'a yadayhi. When al khayl, when the soldiers now, you have 4,000 coming to Al Hussein. As soon as almost he entered yani, Iraq, uh, al, al, the, these 4,000 soldiers now, or warriors that were sent to fight, now are coming around Al Hussein. He says, Al Hussein, the narration of Ibn Kathir, Al Hussein raised his hand and said this dua. We mentioned that dua yesterday. He says, Allahumma, oh Allah. You are my trust in every difficulty. And you are my hope in every hardship. And you are to me, Ya Allah. And you are my refuge in every difficulty that befalls me. You are my trust, and you are what I rely on. Come in, Hammin. How come in, Khatban? The narration in Ibn Kathir here, come in, Hammin. How many concerns uh, did I face? Where the hearts become weak. And I run out of options. And the friend lets you down and betrays you. And the enemy becomes happy. Ya Allah, I brought it and presented it to you. And I complained about it to you, Ya Allah. Out of wanting to submit it to you and be with you rather than relying on anything else other than you. Fafarrajtahu, Ya Allah, you removed it. Wakashaftahu, and you alleviated it. Wakafaitani, wakafaitani, and you have sufficed me from its evil. Fa'anta wali yu kulli ni'ma. Ya Allah, you are the wali of every of every good that I have. وَصَاحِبُ كُلِّ حَسَنَةً And you are the owner of every hasana. وَمُنْتَهَا كُلِّ غَايَةً And you are the extent of all my riches. Now, and this obviously, this is narrated also by many other historians, also in Kitab al-Dua, Imam al-Tabarani, rahimahullah, others. And uh, if this authentic, it shows you also what 
it shows you as Hussein realized he's up, he's coming up now to a difficulty where he says, you know, many difficulties I went through in my life where basically the heart is becomes weak because it's so the plot is so thick and the uh, the planning of the enemy is so vile and and and, and big and complex and multi-layered uh, where I run out of options, where the friend betrays and the enemy becomes half. But Ya Allah, I have always submitted it to you. And I have put it before you. You alleviated it and you removed it. And this dua is prepared. Yeah, yeah, by prepared, sorry, I mean try it, try it. I have tried it many times on a personal level. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. I've seen results on that. Well, Allah, the dua is dua. The best dua are the dua in the Quran and in the authentic prophetic sunnah. dua, one can make any dua he wants. And um, this dua is one of those dua that uh, yeah, I personally uh, love and I use uh, whenever I remember. Wallahu alam. Another narration goes, Ibn Kathir brings a narration. He says, al Hussein now coming in Iraq, going to, uh, arriving at a place called Karbala. He says, Qal al Hussein hina nazilu Karbala. The narration says, Ibn Kathir says, al Hussein says, when they arrived to the place called Karbala. Ma ismu hadhi al -arab? What is the name of this land where we are in now? What this region, or what, this, this place, what is the name? Where are we on? Where are we are? Qalu Karbala. They said Karbala. Al Imam al Hussein said Karbun wa Bala. Karb means uh, uh, difficulty. Bala means calamity. Right? So they told them Karbala. He says Karb wa Bala. Right? وَبَعَثَ عُبَيْدُ اللَّهِ بِنْ زِيَادْ عُمَرْ بِنْ سَعَدْ يُقَاتِلُ عُبَيْدُ اللَّهِ بِنْ زِيَادْ The governor of Kufa sent Umar bin Sa'd. Remember Umar bin Sa'd, Abi Waqqas? His father is a Sahabi. Oh, this man was in the majlis of عُبَيْدُ اللَّهِ بِنْ زِيَادْ, the governor of Kufa. And remember Muslim bin Aqil, uh, he had asked him to... Uh, sent some to, to al Hussein, and he asked him to fulfill his last will, if you remember. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ala. Uh, Ubaidullah bin Ziyad appointed Umar bin Sa'd as the leader to fight al Hussein. Faqal al Hussein. Ibn Kathir says al Hussein told him when Umar bin Sa'd came with the soldiers. Ya Umar. O oh, Umar bin Sa'd bin Abi Waqqas, اختر مني إحدى ثلاث خصال. You know, you're coming to fight me. Here, I'm, I'll give you three choices. Either you let, because now they're surrounding al Hussein with all these soldiers. Umar bin Sa'd is the chief. And Umar bin Sa'd bin Abi Waqqas is a related. There's, per, yani, okay, not direct, direct, but it is direct enough. Because Bani Zuhra are related to uh, their button min butun Quraysh, right? Those are not from, those are min al bitah, min zawahil Quraysh. They are from the essence of Quraysh. Quraysh also has al bitah, wal zawahil, etc. Others also. Ah, Quraysh. Yani the households of Quraysh that are there, they're related, right? You are my relatives. You are my relatives. He says, all right. But I understand you are the commander for Abaydullah bin Ziyad, the governor of uh, yeah, the governor of Kufa, the worker, the uh, governor for Yazid, basically. Yani he is now the soldier of the army of Yazid. And Hussein tells him, take three things. Either allow me to go back where I came from. Yeah. I came from Mecca. I'll go back to Mecca. Or if you disagree, or if you don't, if you disagree with that, then 
فسيرني إلى يزيد فأضع يدي في يده فيحكم في ما رأى then let's go all to Yazid في الشام in Damascus يعني طبعا and I put my hand in his hand and he'll make his judgment if you disagree with this one فسيرني إلى الترك Allow me to go to the Turk, yani the Turkish tribes at that time. I'll fight them until I die. And that's because obviously they were fighting in, in, these, uh, in these areas, right? After Daylam and North, where Turkic tribes were, and they were not Muslims yet, and uh, there were there was some fights going on, meaning that was a war zone. So Al Hussein asked him. Let me go that way, and I'll fight them until I die. That's these are the three things allegedly. Page five seventeen uh, is what Al Hussein asked uh, the commander of the army, Omar bin Saad bin Abi Waqqas. Obviously, Omar bin Saad uh, he he has to come, talk to his boss, Ubaidullah bin Ziyad, the governor, and Ubaidullah bin Ziyad, uh, his boss is says Yazid. This is how it is. Ibn Kathir says, فَأَرْسَلَ إِلَى بْنِ زِيَادٍ uh, Umar bin Sa'ad sent to Ibn Ziyad, here are three things, right? Either let him go back to where he came from, يعني مكة, or let him go to Yazid, and uh, he, he will put his hand in the hand of Yazid, and they will see what happens, or allow him to go to fight in the wars with the Turkic tribes. فَأَرْسَلَ إِلَى بْنِ زِيَادٍ بِذَلِكَ Umar bin Sa'ad, the commander of the army, sent to his boss, the governor of Kufa, Ubaidullah bin Ziyad, with these three choices. فَهَمَّ أَنْ يُسَيِّرَهُ إِلَى يَزِيدٍ And Ubaidullah bin, bin Ziyad almost uh, agreed to, uh, to allow them or to allow the whole caravan to keep going all the way to Yazid in Damascus. فَقَالَ شِمْرُ بِنْ دُذِي الْجَوْشَنِ One man whose name is Shimr bin Dhil Jawshan. One of those خبيث يعني نعوذ بالله من ومن أمثاله and people like him. قَالَ لَا he told Ubaidullah bin Ziyad, no, don't allow him to go to Yazid, except only after he agrees to your governorship and gives you first bay'ah to you, to your hand, to Yazid through you. Right? He wants to go to Yazid, or he's, he agrees to go to Yazid, we allow him to go to Yazid. But first he gives, he goes through you, then he goes on to Yazid. فَأَرْسَلَ إِلَيْهِ بِذَلِكَ Ibn Kathir says, that's what Ubaidullah bin Ziyad eventually decided because of this man Shimr, al-Khabith هذا. نَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ Even his name, right? Shimr. فَإِبْن Ziyad agreed. And went to Al Hussein and told him, he says, uh, the only way is to first put your hand in, yeah, and he basically go through Ibn Ziyad first, or by the love in Ziyad, then to Yazid. Al Hussein, Wallahi la af'al. By Allah, I will never do. Al Hussein allegedly said, Wa Abu Ta'a Umaru an Qitali. Umar bin Sa'ad slowed down. He did not want to start a fight, though he was commanded to fight Al Hussein with all the soldiers. But he kept delaying to see maybe something comes up. Yani Omar bin Sa'ad, number one, was an older man. Yani older man, yani maybe I, I'm thinking he was slightly older than Al Hussein, maybe in his mid-60s or so. Uh, he is related to Al Hussein. Um, not everybody with the tyrant is 
bloodthirsty or even is willing to sacrifice even with a tyrant he wants to benefit from the tyrant without sacrificing he's with him and he will sacrifice something but not too much and even for Omar bin Sa'd this is big fighter Hussein is big so uh, he's got gray hair and uh, he didn't really want to fight Al Hussein but he wants to get a position he wants to get money that's my comment and we will see it eventually so you know so anyway Ibn Kathir says Umar. Umar bin Sa'd delayed the initiation of the fight Ubaidullah bin Ziyad arsala ilayhi Shimr bin Dil Jawshan. remember Shimr who gave the Ibn Ziyad the advice don't allow him to go to Yazid so Ibn Ziyad sent Shimr bin Dil Jawshan to the army and telling told Shimr bin Dil Jawshan and that Shimr bin Dil Jawshan one vile khabith yani, uh, like very few that you may see in your life. May Allah spare you from seeing some of uh, the, these kinds of people. And unfortunately, I've seen it. Na'udhu billah minhum wa min shururihim. Nasa'Allah wa naja'ala shururahum fi nuh shururihim fi nuh shururihim. Wa niyu'amilhum bi'adlihi illa mi'adihim. Yeah. Taba'an, Ibn Ziyad, what he did is Yani when he did not hear anything from Omar bin Sa'ad, who has the army, he did not start the fight. He told him, no way, You're, this is the, the only way is this way. And Hussein says, no way, now we're supposed to fight. The fight was supposed to start. Omar bin Sa'ad is delaying the fight. Abaydullah bin Ziyad, the governor of Kufa, sent Shimr bin Dil Jawshan, this vile man, billah, telling him, and he told Shimr bin Ziyad, Abaydullah bin Ziyad told Shimr, he told him, in taqaddama Omar faqatil. If Umar bin Sa'ad leads, fight with him. If he doesn't stand, start the fight, kill him and take his spot, be the commander, right? With this delegation now, Umar bin Sa'ad, وكان مع, Ibn Kathir says, وَكَانَ مَعَ عُمَرْ قَرِيبٌ مِنْ ثَلَاثِيدَ رَجُلًا مِنْ أَهْلِ الْكُوفَةِ And uh, with Umar, there were 30 people from the people of Kufa. So that was the negotiating team and the, uh, the soldiers that, that Umar bin Sa'ad had, right? فَقَالُوا لَهُمْ يَعْرِضُ عَلَيْكُمْ إِبْنَ بِنْتِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ يعني Among the people with Umar bin Sa'ad, there were 30 people from the people of Kufa. Uh, they heard the negotiation, the negotiation between Umar bin Sa'ad and Hussein. So those 30 people, among, in the, within the army from the people of Kufa, they told them the son of the daughter of Rasulullah gives you three options and you reject all of them? You don't accept any of them? Hussein, Ibn Kathir says, they switch sides from, Ibn Zee, from Umar bin Sa'ad's side, they all switch the 30 people to Al Hussein's camp. Uh, another narration here also is uh, Ibn Kathir brings where he says, uh, to that. Yani one of the narrator, his name is Hussein, he says, I was there with when Al Hussein was killed. He says, uh, I saw Al Hussein. And he had a jubba uh, that is nice and has like lions on it. وَرَمَاهُ رَجُلٌ And an archer named Amr bin Khalid al-Tuhawi. He threw يعني, in the battle. So you, now we're seeing just different accounts of the battle uh, that took place. He says an, an archer's name is Amr bin Khalid. He threw an arrow at Al-Hussein. And I saw an arrow stuck to the forehead of Al-Hussein. This man, right? This is nice. 
another narration here. I know it's it's we're going back and forth with the narration, but I'm just going by the book exactly. So uh, bear with me. He will eventually he'll eventually sort itself out. Uh, another narration Ibn Kathir brings that Al Hussein uh, uh, he, he brings uh, he brings Ibn Kathir brings another narration saying that uh, among the, uh, the people of Kufa sent Al Hussein a message saying, "Inna ma'aka mi'at alf, with you are one hundred thousand people ready." Look at that. When when first Muslim when he sent the Muslim bin Aqil. 18,000 came at the beginning and gave bayat to al Hussein through Muslim bin Aqil. The people of Kubas told them, you have 100,000. And then the story. Another uh, narration Ibn Kathir brings. Uh, he says, uh, Ibn, Ibn Ziyad ordered that uh, they surround the roads all the way from Basra. Basra is southern Iraq, right? So when you come from Mecca and you go north, the first part of Iraq you'll enter is basically Basra, which is, and today if you go through eastern, the eastern des the desert, let's say from Mecca, you go east to Riyadh today, for example, which is Najd, and you go all the way to Kuwait, for example, today, and you go right on the borders of Kuwait, basically that's where Basra is. So uh, uh, Ibn Ziyad put soldiers on the roads of Basra and around it. No one is allowed to leave, no one is allowed to come in. And Hussein. The narration says coming in and he coming into Basra now and that area and doesn't feel anything until he was passing by some nomads or Bedouins uh, out there in the tents يعني, who live in the tents. Arab are those people who live in the tents. He asked them about people. What's going on there? يعني, give, give me any news you know about what's going on. They said, Wallahi la nadri, we don't know, but we know one thing, you cannot go in, you cannot go out. Qal, this narration says, Al Hussein changed his direction going towards Yazid bin Muawiyah, yani toward the Sham. Fatalaqathu al Khuyulu bi Karbala. So there, the the, he met then with the real army, the whole army, the horses and, and the people on the, the, the soldiers on horses in Karbala. And he was in Karbala asking them by Allah and by Islam. Another narration it says Ibn Ziyad sent to Al Hussein, Allah Ibn Ziyad, the governor of Kufa and also the governor of Basra. Both he sent to Ibn Ziyad, Umar bin Sa'ad, and Shimr bin Diljawshan, wa Husayn bin Numair. Three Umar bin Sa'ad, Nabi Waqqas, we know now. Shimr bin Diljawshan, as Al Khabith, as well, we know. Wa Husayn bin Numair, also one of the people who actually was uh, who, who actually captured the messenger of Al Hussein and got him to obey the love of Ziyad and eventually uh, got killed. Three. فَنَاشَدَهُمُ الْحُسَيْنُ اللَّهَ وَالْإِسْلَامُ أَنْ يُسَيِّرُوهُ إِلَىٰ أَمِيرِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ يَزِيدٌ فَيَضَعَ يَدَهُ فِي يَدِهِ فَقَالُوا لَهُ لَا إِلَّا عَلَىٰ حُكْمِ بِنِ زِيَادٍ And uh, here the narration says allegedly that al Hussein asked them by Allah and Islam to allow him to go to Amir al-Mu'mineen Yazid allegedly here so he can put his hand in his hand they all refused. They said, you will have to submit to Ibn Ziyad, the governor first. Wakan, he says, the narration says, among the people who were sent to Al-Hussein in this delegate, in this army, yani, 
uh, to tell him a man whose name is Al Hur bin Yazid Al Hanzali, Thumma Nahshali, Ala Khail. This man was a warrior, Al Hur bin Yazid was a warrior, and he was uh, with a squadron of, 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 of soldiers on, on horses. And he heard what Al Hussein told them, right? What he told Umar bin Sa'ad and Shemr, Shemr and Hussein. Hussain bin Numair, he told them that, you know, allegedly allow me to go to a sham, to Yazid, and then, so when he heard this man, Hur bin Yazid, one of the commanders of Ubaidullah bin Ziyad or Yazid's army, his name is Al Hur bin Yazid. Al Hur means the free, bin Yazid al Hamdan. He heard and he told his people, and he told, Omar bin Sa'ad, Shimr bin Diljawsha, and Hussain bin Numa, he told them, Ala taqbaluna min haulai ma ya'aruduna alaykum. Don't you accept from them what they're asking, what the options they're offering you? Wallahi law sa'alakum hadha turku wa dayla. By Allah, if the Turkic people that you're fighting and the Daylam people that you're fighting, you're in war with them. If they ask you these options, it would not be permissible for you to, to, to uh, uh, reject them, reject those options. They refused except to bring uh, Al Hussein to subjugate him and sub make him uh, submit to Ubaidullah bin Ziyad. Al Hur then he hit the face of his horse, Al Hur bin Yazid, right? One of the commanders of, of the Yazidi army. He hit the uh, face of his horse and moved, kicked his horse basically, and moved towards Al Hussein and his companions. They thought that he came to fight them. Al Hur was a big warrior, known. So they thought that he came just to fight them. When he got close to Al Hussein, he flipped his shield the other way around which means he did not come to fight. He opened himself up. عليهم, and he gave salam to them. Ziyad. Then he started, he turned around and started fighting the soldiers of Ibn Ziyad and he, he fighting them and he killed from them two people then he was killed. Rahimahullah. Uh, now we're going through like I said, bits and pieces of the battle, but that's how Ibn Kathir is mentioning it. Another narration uh, says, وأقبل الحسين يكلم ما من بعث إليه ابن زياد. Ibn Ziyad had already sent, right? Remember, and he sent Amr bin Sa'ad, he sent uh, Ibn Dil Jawshan, Ibn Ziyad sent Ubaidullah bin Ziyad, and he sent Al Husayn bin Numair. Husayn bin Numair. Al Hussein now, this narration says, Al Hussein was talking to those people that Ibn Awadullah bin Ziyad was, was, has sent to negotiate. Wa'ala al Hussein, Al Hussein was wearing a jubba, min barud, and this jubba had lines in it, nice jubba. Falamma kallamahu munsaraf. Once he talked to them and finished, uh, he left back. Faramahu rajulum min bani tamim. A man from bani tamim. A Tamimi man, his name is Amr bin Khalid. His name is Amr bin Khalid. Al-Tuhawi, he threw, he was an archer. He threw an arm, uh, he threw an arch, an arrow of one, towards Al Imam Al Hussein. This man says, فَإِنِّي لَأَنظُرُ إِلَى السَّهْمِ بَيْنَ كَتِفَيْهِ مُتَعَلِّقًا بِجُبَّتِهِ I could see the arm between the shoulders of Al Hussein stuck with his jubba, with his, the cloth that he had on, right? So I, I guess it wasn't meant to necessarily kill him, uh, but it was meant to hit him, maybe to wound him. When the delegation of Ibn Ziyad, the negotiation thing, they refused what Al Hussein offered them, he went back to his 
to his uh, side, to his camp. He says, And I am looking at the camp of Al Hussein. They are close to a hundred people. Among them, five are children of Ali. Right? From the yani from Ali bin Abi Talib. Women Bani Hashem, and among them in from Bani Hashem, 16. Warajulam min Bani Sulaim. And there's one man from Bani Sulaim and one man from Bani Kinana, Wabnu Ammi ibn Ziyad, and the cousin of Ibn Ziyad with Al Hussein. So uh, another narration. Um, here, this uh, narration here will uh, uh, will finish this narration and then we'll stop. Actually, yeah. Let me until I go into year sixty-one. So we're almost done with year sixty from the from Ibn Kathir's Bidayah uh, Nihaya. Let me finish this paragraph and then tomorrow, if Allah gives us the time and the opportunity, we'll start with the events of year sixty-one because this would. Uh, Ibn Kathir brings a narration. He says. We are uh, bathing in water with Omar bin Sa'id, right? So, yeah, I mean, there, there's water and there, we're sitting inside the water and all that. Maybe a river, maybe an oasis, maybe like this. A man came to him and spoke to him privately. He told him, Ibn Ziyad sent you Juwayriya bin Badr at Tamimi. Ibn Ziyad sent you another man, his name is Juwayriya. And he ordered Juwayriya, Ubaidullah Ibn Ziyad ordered him, the governor, if you do not fight Al Hussein to behead you. Omar bin Sa'd immediately jumped on his horse and rode his horse. And this is now in the in the battle. So that's why it's uh, it's it's just bits and pieces. Just bear with me here. And he called for his uh, weapons and on his horse, Amr bin Sa'ad, and uh, uh, he went and started fighting uh, Al Hussein. And eventually, Al Imam Hussein's head, he was beheaded, and they brought Al Hussein's head to Ubaidullah bin Ziyad and was placed between his hands. And he had that metal stick that he used to have, and he kept poking in the nose of the head of Al Imam Al Hussein, and uh, and said that uh, in Al Husayna, uh, yani, uh, started saying uh, something uh, about uh, Al Hussein, radiyallahu taala anhu. وَعَلَيْهِ سَحَائِبُ الرِّضْوَانِ والسلام. He said to them, إِنَّ حُسَيْنًا uh, كَانَ uh, uh, Let me read the word here in Arabic. كَانَ شَمَتْ يعني he uh, now is mixed in his, uh, in his hair or so. Uh, different colors or so. And then the narration says, وَجِيَا بِنِسَاهِهِ وَبَنَاتِهِ وَأَهْلِهِ And the women of Al Hussein uh, were brought, and the children and the daughters of Al Hussein were brought, and the family of Al Hussein were brought uh, to Ibn Ziyad. The narrator says here, and the best thing he did is that he uh, ordered uh, that they would be in a secluded place and uh, ordered for them clothing and uh, sustenance. Um, and he says, uh, two young, uh, young uh, or, or teenagers, let's say, two teenagers uh, from them, uh, they're the children of Abdullah bin Ja'far or Ibn Ibn Ja'far. So Ibn Abdullah bin Ja'far bin Abi Talib, right? So two young teenagers, the children of Abdullah bin Ja'far bin Abi Talib, uh, they, it seems that they ran away 
and they sought refuge with a man from Tay, a, a tribe from Tay, and he beheaded them both, these teenagers, and brought their heads between to Ubaidullah bin Ziyad. He figured since the government is against Al Hussein, if I do this, then you know I'll be rewarded, even if it means killing young people. So what it makes no difference? Those were people who were, uh, uh, you know. These are examples of humanity also that we have, unfortunately. Ibn Ziyad almost killed him for that. Yeah, you don't have to kill these young children. We, we, we want, we could have killed him. And he ordered his house to be destroyed. That's what the narration says. Uh, another, another thing that Ibn Kathir he mentions here also, just continuously, and these are, like I said, bits and pieces. I think when he goes in year 61, it becomes more streamlined, the events. But he says, a uh, bondsman of Muawiyah bin Abi Sufyan told me, and he narrated, he says, when the, uh, when the head of the Imam al Hussein was brought to Yazid in Damascus, uh, he was placed between him. I saw Yazid crying, he says. Allahu alam. And says, And he said that had there been a blood relationship between Awaidullah bin Ziyad and Al Hussein, he wouldn't have done that. Um, yani, uh, I don't know. Al Hussein, one of the narrators says, when Al Hussein was killed, this is page 520 here. When Al Hussein was killed, Labithu Shahraini Othalatha, they remained two people remained two or three months. Kaanama Plattahul Hawa Ittu Biddima Isa Atta Tatlu Shamsu Hatta Tartafe. As if uh, when the sun rises in the morning, as if the color is all blood that reflects on the walls in the cities up until when the sun actually rises. All right. These are, again, historical narrations that cannot really be backed up uh, authentically. But you see how things are there, because some people think these things are not written anywhere. They're just made up. No, they're written. They're narrated. Wallahu uh, alam. I'm not endorsing or negating or affirming because the negating and affirming takes us a long time to establish things, and I think we don't have time for that. Uh, Ibn Kathir says, in this year, the one who led Hajj, usually the one who leads Hajj is the Khalifa. In this year, the one who led Hajj is Amr bin Sa'id ibn al As, the governor of Yazid over Mecca, on Mecca and Medina. Uh, and obviously, Yazid in this year also, in the year 60, fired the governor of Medina, Al Walid bin Utba, and he added to his governorship in Mecca, he added his governorship over Medina. This was in the month of Ramadan. Also, he says, Ibn Kathir says, in this year, year 60 of Hijrah, yani, which is about 49 years after the prophetic departure, only, that's it, right? 49 years after the prophetic departure. That's when we're talking all that stuff. Uh, Ibn Kathir says, Ubaidullah bin Ziyad was uh, made the governor over Basra and Kufa. From this point on, Ibn Kathir says, Thumma dakhalat sanatu ihda wa sittin, then entered the city of, uh, no, I'm sorry, entered the year of, the year of 61 of Hijrah, entered. And um, I think from now, uh, the whole uh, focus on Ali Imam Hussein will be more streamlined. We'll leave that, inshallah, till tomorrow. And we are on, for those who are following us on Al Bidayah on Nihayah by Ibn Kathir, it's page 521 in the Arabic language, obviously. And uh, it is the beginning of the events of year 61 of Hijrah. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak. على سيدنا محمد وآله والحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم اغفر لنا وارحمنا ولا تؤاخذنا اللهم إنك عفو كريم تحب العفو فاعف عنا يا كريم وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وآله
Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. We'll see you inshallah tomorrow if Allah wills the same time. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah khair Sayyidina. Inshallah we'll continue with the series tomorrow at the same time. Again, just a quick reminder, inshallah, to receive more about uh, more updates about our daily activities and more programs about Medina Institute and our intensive one year one year intensive Usuluddin program. Please do sign up at medinainstitute.live slash sign up. Inshallah, we'll see you all tomorrow. Be safe. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.